Let's talk about electrical resistance. Previously, you've learned about electric current, which is due to the flow of charged particles in a conductor. They are accelerated by an electric field. However, as they drift, they will come into contact with the particles of the material that also exhort electric forces on them. Depending on the exact makeup and density of the material, these interactions can be more frequent. These two will alter the velocity of the charge and hence the resulting current. This is similar how obstacles slow the flow of a river. The more obstacles there are, the more they resist the flow. To get a basic feel for resistance in a conducting wire, we are going to use the simulation from phet.colorado.edu. The simulator may need flash player enabled. You may want to turn off the simulation sounds. Resistance is a scalar quantity and its units are ohms. To a first approximation usable in most everyday wiring applications, resistance depends on three factors. Resistivity, the length of the wire, and its cross sectional area. Resistivity is intrinsic to the material involved. It is related to the density of particles, but also the exact composition of the material as well. The length of wire just adds even more obstacles to overcome. But spreading out the material over a larger area means that the electrons flowing through the wire have more paths to flow, which reduces resistance. Conversely, if you reduce the area, you are forcing the current through a narrower channel, which increases resistance. The correct application of resistance will be important once you learn about Ohm's law, which relates 
the voltage and current in electric circuits. As mentioned, the exact relationships between resistance, resistivity, and dimensions is only a first approximation. There are many other factors. Resistivity itself depends on composition, and it is low for metals, but it is not a one-to-one -one relationship for them either. Also keep in mind that many conductors are a combination of different elements. There may be different temperature dependencies for different materials as well, and resistance can also depend whether you're applying DC or AC currents. Play around with the simulator until you get a better qualitative understanding. And also check that you can replicate the calculations as well. Once you are more comfortable understanding resistance, make sure to check out additional simulators from phet.colorado.edu.